Huntington Beach, California, for the world's largest professional surfing competition, the OP Pro Surfing Championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Bart Connor, along with Gregory Harrison and Ian Cairns. Gregory, we're, of course, everybody knows you from Trapper John, the star of that television series. But surfing is your bag. You know the competitors. You know the conditions. Did you bring your board? Would you like to be out there? Yeah, I brought my board, and I would like to be out there, except I'm really not in that league, you know? I've surfed for about 20 years. I've surfed with a lot of these guys, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot get as good as they are. Well, what about the conditions here for the finals? Well, the waves have been good. Uh, all through the trials, the waves were about six to eight feet, and the swell is holding for today. So the, so the semifinals and the finals should be very competitive. The waves are just big enough to give these guys the room and the power they need to pull off their best maneuvers. So uh, it's an exciting group of guys that are left in the finals now and a couple of ladies, and Ian will tell you all about them. Thank you. Delighted to have you here, Gregory. Great to be here. Ian, of course, you're a world champion and director of this event. You know these competitors inside and out. Who do we have in the finals? Well, we're down to two women in the finals. We have Georgia Smith from California and Jodie Cooper from Australia. Jodie's from Western Australia, in fact. Three years on the Pro Tour, and this was her biggest final to date. She's a great surfer. And up against Jodie is Georgia Smith from California. This is her first year on the Tour, and she's really stoked to be out here in front of a home crowd. In the men's semi-finals, we have Michael Ho from Hawaii. A veteran surfer, he's been around for many years, but still a great surfer, and he's doing terrific out here at Huntington. And he's up against a Sydney surfer, Sydney, Australia, Mark Okalupo, one of the strongest young surfers on the tour, a terrifically powerful surfer, powerful and fast. And here's another powerful Australian, Tom Carroll, twice world champion. This is his best finish to date in the OP Pro. And Tom's up against another Tom, Tom Curran from California, really the greatest surfer California has produced. Quite a liner. The surfing is just going to be exceptional. They're going to be going through the lip in these great waves. We're going to see the greatest surfing in the world here, Bart. I have to put you on the spot a little bit, though. I know you're living in the United States, but you're from Australia. We have three Americans, three Australians in the finals. Who's going to win? Well, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm, I'm excited just to be here. The surfing is going to be exceptional. My heart's hanging out there for Australia, though. Come on, Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking to forward to some fantastic surfing for the finals. The waves are great, the sun is shining, and we have a bonus for you, the Miss OP Beauty Pageant, which is part of this weekend's event. You'll see why you hear so much about California girls. So get ready for a day at the beach. We'll be right back with the OP Pro Surfing Championship from Huntington Beach, California, Surf City, USA. We are joining in progress the semi-final heats here at Huntington Beach, California for the OP Pro Surfing Championship. In this semi-final, keep in mind it's the best two out of three. We have Tom Curran and Tom Carroll. Tom Carroll, of course, from Australia, is the current world champion, and Tom Curran was the winner of this event last year. Ian, how do you feel that they're doing so far? Well, again, we've got a terrific heat going on here. Uh, Tommy Curran is looking very, very strong. He came back from losing the first semi-final matchup, went out and won the second semi-final matchup. We're out here in the third. He's looking good. Tom Carroll won clearly in the first one. He fell off often in the second matchup, and he's fallen a couple of times here this morning in, in his third and final matchup, but he just came back with a very, very strong wave. Gregory, the winner here goes into the men's finals. The pressure must be intense. Well, I think they're both under a lot of pressure out there, but they're both coming, at, to, rising to meet it uh, admirably. This is probably the best surfing that I've seen in the contest so far. These two are are both very aggressive, very fluid, but radical surfers, and, and they're doing their best moves out here now. The crowd is loving it. What about consistency? I know you say radical, and it's important. The crowd goes wild when they see some flashing moves, but yeah. you have to be consistent. You have to ride the wave all the way in, stay with it all the time. Well, yes, you certainly do, Bart. The consistency is vitally important. The, the judges are scoring on their best four rides, and you can see Tommy Curran here riding an excellent wave, bringing it all the way in. He's not making any mistakes. He's pulling off every manoeuvre flawlessly all the way in from the outside with a great re-entry on the inside section there and finishing off the wave into the shore break. Now, that's what I mean by consistency, bringing it all the way in from the outside. Why don't you give us just a brief overview at what the judges are looking for? Okay, Bart. Well, basically, it's the largest wave 
longest distance, best manoeuvres and closest to the curl of the wave. So if a surfer was to catch a very big set wave from the very furthest outside peak, ride it all the way into next to the pier, get a couple of cover-ups like uh, Tom Carroll's been getting right on the inside, plus doing incredible manoeuvres, he's going to be up to you know, close to 10 out of 10. And you can hear the crowd going crazy as one of those cover-up manoeuvres has just got uh, performed by Tommy Carroll there. And that's the kind of surfing we're looking for. A large outside wave, good manoeuvres all the way in, finishing off clean. Gregory, what about the breaking? The wave seems to break on the outside, there's a little bit of a lull, and then it breaks on the shore again. Yeah, that's, it's pretty typical of Huntington Beach for it to break that way on a, on a decent-sized swell, which we have here today. Uh, it's, it's basically a south-southwest swell coming down from near Mexico. Uh, there's a little bit of a mix here. I think with a swell that's come all the way across the Pacific from New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah, they're six thousand miles. Uh, but but what happens is the wave will break outside. It'll, it'll wall up, start to, to a sort of a sliding break, and then it'll 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 uh, turn into the, the white water. Then it will reform on the inside. Now they have to make the connection between the outside and the inside if they want to get the length of ride points. And it'll reform on the inside, and there it'll wall up and tend to throw out more, and you'll get a tube sometimes. And if you can get inside that, you're asking for extra points. Down on the beach with a tool of the surfing trade in hand is the fourth member of our announcing team today, Dave Stanfield. Let's go to him. Thanks a lot, guys. State-of-the-art surfing equipment has changed over the years. This right here is Tommy Kern's backup board. It's six feet in length, weighs about four and a half pounds, and if you could possibly get a hold of one of these prototype speed rockets, probably cost you $450. You notice it's a thruster, three fins on the bottom, the most popular board used today, and the board that Tommy's going to try to ride to his third consecutive victory. Back to you, Bart. Thanks, Dave. And right now, this man stands in the way of Tom Kearns making it to his third consecutive OP Pro Final. Two-time world champion Tom Carroll from Newport, Australia, Ian. Tommy Carroll is really such a phenomenal surfer. Beautiful flow and power. Carroll falls, Ian. Well, that's just amazing. I have never seen Tom Carroll make that sort of mistake. His foot just slipped off the tail of the board. Look, here in the replay, we can see that this wave doesn't have a lot of power, and Carroll's going all out with his maneuvers. He simply throws too much weight into the turn, board slides out from under him, and he falls. Carroll also had another disastrous wipeout earlier in the heat, Ian. Well, some things seem to be going wrong for Tommy Carroll. This is uh, not the sort of surfing I expect. Would you say Curran's ahead in the heat? I'd say for sure. He's not making any mistakes, Bart. So it's Tom Curran from Santa Barbara, California. Up and riding Tom Curran just with a beautiful maneuver right off the top there. The waves are fairly small, and this middle section here is the kind of section that makes a break a ride. And you can see Tommy Curran is able to weave the surfboard backwards and forwards, finding impossible sections. And that was a fantastic cutback maneuver there. And he's bringing it right the way through into the pier, ducking the pylons and keeping the maneuvers going. One maneuver, another maneuver, backwards and forwards. And that was a good wave here, and it's really, he's really putting the pressure on Tom Carroll for sure. Yeah, I can't, I can't see Tommy Carroll coming back after those, those wipeouts. And there's the horn ending the heat. That was some pretty fine surfing despite the small wave conditions. While we're waiting for the final scores from the judges, let's take a look at the men these guys had to beat to get into the semifinals. Tom Carroll had to defeat Barton Lynch from Australia. Barton Lynch is really a fantastic goofy foot surfer from Australia. He's on his way to a, possibly a world title this year. Another surfing great from Australia, Mark Richards. Mark Richards is a four-time world champion. That's a record yet to be matched. A consummate professional, Sean Thompson. Sean's an old surfing buddy of mine. He hails from South Africa, but he lives now in Santa Monica. He's 1978 world champ. A fast-rising star in the surfing world, Willie Morris. Willie Morris is a great surfer from California. Very strong in good waves like this. Another Hawaiian star, Hans Hiedemann. Hans Hiedemann is a great surfer. Terrific in big waves in Hawaii, but also a great competitor in smaller waves in Huntington Beach. And Martin Potter from England performed very well. Martin Potter is a great surfer. You can see him tucking into the tube there. Very snappy surfer. A great surfer. He can perform off the top backhand, into the barrel, forehand, everything. Let's go to Dave Stanfield and Tom Curran. How do you feel about that heat? Everybody was just going nuts. They were screaming for you, yelling for you. Got some great waves. Uh... Well, I had a good start, and then Carol came back really well, and uh, I knew I had to pull it out in the end. Your momentum, good concentration through the whole heat? I felt good. All right, best luck. That was a strong performance by California's Tom Curran. I see Dave with Tom Carroll now. Let's go back down to them. Dave? Your feelings on the heat. 
Oh, I felt like someone had a voodoo doll on me out there. What? What do you mean? I don't know. I just... Slipping off in the most ridiculous parts, grabbing rails. I felt terrible. I felt terrible. Well, you, everybody loved you. You surfed great. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. So Tom Carroll not at all happy with his performance. We'll have to wait and see what the judges say. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more exciting surfing action at the OP Pro. Right after this. Welcome back to Huntington Beach, California for more of the OP Pro Surfing Championship. You know, ever since the 1950s and 60s, Huntington Beach has been known affectionately as Surf City, USA. Popular music groups like the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean sang about the sport and the California surfing lifestyle. Duke Kahanamoku of Hawaii, the father of modern surfing, brought the sport to the mainland in the 1920s, and Surf City quickly became known as one of the best breaks on the coast. With the advent of surfing competition, Huntington Beach became a mecca for the best surfers of the day. Many riding boards they had designed and built themselves. The competitive sport was in its infancy. The equipment was big and ponderous, but the pioneer spirit and love of the sun, sand, and surf caused the sport to grow and flourish, eventually becoming the high-performance international competition that it is today. A lot of waves have passed beneath the Huntington Beach Pier since those days. The boards have gotten lighter and smaller. The surfing maneuvers have gotten more radical. But that spirit of fun has never dimmed, and Surf City still retains its hallowed spot in the history of the sport of surfing here in the 1980s. We're back live at the OP Pro. I'm Bart Connor along with Gregory Harrison and Ian Cairns, and the entire Dynacom crew bring you the action from Huntington Beach, California. We're joining the second men's semi-final in progress. Michael Ho against Mark Akalupo. Mark Akalupo is surfing very, very well against Michael Ho. Michael Ho's been very, very strong. Surprise me, Bart. He's come all the way through the competition and up against a radical surfer like uh, Mark Akalupo. I wasn't expecting Ho to do so well. But he's stringing together manoeuvres so well today, pulling the wave all the way through from the outside, going backwards and forwards in the flat spot of the wave. And he has this little patented manoeuvre on the inside section where he tries to tuck into the barrel, pulls it in the backhand there, and he pulls out of that, off the top, and that was a very, very strong wave for Michael Ho, bringing it into the... <laughs> and he falls unbelievably close to those barnacle-covered pilings. Right into the pilings. I've been hung upside down over those pilings before, Bart, and I tell you, it's no fun in there. It's very dangerous. Mark Ocalupo going around the priority, boy. Ian, we've talked about the conditions. We've talked about the surfers. Tell us a little bit about the situation out there with priority. Uh, we talked about the safety and the importance of who can catch the wave at the first time, and they have a very strict regulation in terms of priority, don't they? Well, yes, priority means that the surfer who has priority has unconditional right of way to any wave that he wants. That means that the other surfer can't even begin to paddle for him for that wave at the same time, or else he gets, a, he gets an interference penalty is out of the contest. So really what it means is that a, is that a surfer can, can paddle around the buoy, he can sit there, he can select the perfect wave coming through, know that he can take off in any position without being hassled, and that's really a great psychological advantage for a surfer who just likes to go out there and surf. A moment ago we saw Mark pedal for a wave and then pass it up. He loses the priority then, doesn't he? That's right, Bart. Now he has to race with Michael Ho to get it back, and as you can see he barely wins the race. Priority is a prime objective here. Earlier, we saw Michael Ho almost fall into the pilings under the pier. Here's a shot from Dan Merkel, our water photographer, giving us a surfer's eye look at just how ominous those pilings really are. And Ocalupo is up and riding. Beautiful backhand re-entry, weaving the surfboard across the flat spot in between the outside and the inside break. And now Oki's going to warm up as he gets a little bit more power off the inside section. And coming up here is some beautiful maneuver. Great cutback from Oki. And coming up here, a big re-entry. That's the sort of surfing that Ocalupo needs to do to knock off Michael Ho. Mark Ocalupo putting on an incredible demonstration of power surfing. Gene. If you'll notice, on every wave, he's constantly busy. He takes every maneuver and pushes it to the limit. On the other hand, Michael Ho's strategy seems to be just a little bit different. He seems to be putting more, man more maneuvers together, not quite as radical, but he's putting the pressure on Oki by making all his maneuvers count. He's riding the waves all the way through to the inside. That's a nice re-entry on the inside. Fin slid a little bit, and he brings the wave in the white water, still doing a couple of little maneuvers there. Michael Ho's whole strategy here is to say to, say to Oki, OK, I'm going to ride my waves, complete them, bring them through to the beach. You have to pull off your good maneuvers 
to beat me. And that seems it, it's paid off all the way through the contest for Howie, and it uh, could pay off here in the semi-finals against Okalupa. It's an interesting bit of strategy, Ian. Now let's go down to Dave Stanfield on the beach. This is a local right here, and he knows surfing. This is Matthew from Huntington Beach. Matthew, how old are you? Ten. Ten. You got something real valuable there. What is it? Tom Curran autograph. Oh, I should show it there, Rebecca. That's coming through. Yes, Tommy Curran's little bio here, and there's his autograph. All right. Who do you want to win today? I don't really care. <laughs> he doesn't well, care. Everybody. That's a good answer. Kay. Only one can win, though. I know. <laughs> That's kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it does kind of suck. Uh, that is a term in Huntington Beach used quite often. <laughs> back to you guys up on the stand. Thanks, Dave. And back to the action. Mark Akalupo is up and riding. Well, he sure is, Bart. And that was the kind of performance we like to see from Mocky. A big slashing cutback off the face. Bring it again through that inside middle section and right into the inside shore break. And again, another slashing move. Tries to tuck it under the barrel. Coming into the pier. Now, he was going to pull it right into the barrel there. Saw the pylons backed off a little bit. Smart move from Mocky there. Now, in the slow-mo replay here, Ian, we can see that he's coming off the bottom, slashes it up off the top, and is about to tuck into a tube when he sees the pilings up ahead, and he realizes that wetsuit may protect him from the cold, but not from the barnacles. Looks like we have a pretty good set coming in. It's a nice way for Michael home. There's Michael in a prime position again. Again, he's trying for the right-hander. Very late takeoff. The wave collapses completely on him. And there was a disadvantage with not having enough weight. When the wave comes crumbling down, crashes on him. If he had had more weight, he probably would have been able to hold the board steady at the bottom. But it's amazing what happens inside that wave, but you've got water coming up underneath the board. It's coming down. It's going sideways, and it requires instant reflex action and a lot of strength and weight to hold the board. And it looks like Akalupo has another big one. He sure does. This is just, you know, Aki wave after wave. You know, how he falls off, Rocky picks up a good one. Yeah, this is when everything's going right for you. Akalupo bringing the wave again from the outside all the way through to the inside section. There's the horn ending the heat. And Akalupo brings this wave in with a beautiful finishing re-entry off in the inside section. Very strong way for Mark Okalupa. So while we're waiting for the results from the judges, let's take a look at some of the highlights of today's Miss OP Beauty Contest, while David Lee Roth sings the praises of California Girls. reputation. We'll see the contest results a little later on. Let's go to Dave Stanfield down in the sand. You get out of the water and a bunch of girls attack you. What, what's going on? Well, um, maybe I'm popular, but I'm not too sure. Not as popular as Tom Curran, but uh, I'm doing good for uh, an Australian. They love you over here in America. Okay, about the heat. Your thoughts? Well, I had a good heat. The tide came up, and I got four rides, which I didn't get in the last set. So I feel confident now. Good. Well, best of luck. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the results right now and see if Aki won. Well, Mark Akalupo seems happy with his performance. We'll find out if it was good enough to put him in the finals right after this. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of the OP Pro. <laughs> Huntington 
Beach, California for the finals, the women's finals of the OP Pro Surfing Championship. Hello, I'm Bart Connor along with Gregory Harrison and Ian Cairns. Well, the men's finalists have been decided. Mark Akalupo from Australia has defeated Hawaii's Michael Ho. Mark will now challenge defending champion Tommy Curran. Well, Bart, out in the water right now, we have the women's final with Jody Cooper from Western Australia going up against California's Georgia Smith. This should be really hot action. So, making the finals in the OP Pro is the biggest pump to both these young surfers' careers. And they've got to be feeling the pressure. Neither one has ever made it this far in a contest of this magnitude. Jody Cooper and Georgia Smith are doing fantastically. Uh, Georgia's just had a couple of terrific waves all the way through. Fantastic movement right through the center section. And Jody Cooper, a reasonable wave, and she's out in the lineup now. And it looks like she may have a terrific left handle lined up for her. Yeah, she's in right position for it, Ian. She is too. Jody Cooper paddling, taking off. And it looks like it's got a good face to it. Nice off the top maneuver, and it's going to have a nice reform, I think. It certainly does. It looks like it's going to come all the way through to the inside section. It's the kind of distance that we're looking for. And Jody cuts back. A nice cutback maneuver there. I would have looked for a bigger re-entry there, but she chose to cut back, and she's fighting the white water, bringing it into the inside. A good scoring wave, but not quite enough to win yet. We asked Jody earlier about her preheat strategy. Um, I think just go out there, and I think wave selection is a big thing out there because I'm surfing to my to my best, and um, I think just getting four good waves to the beach is the main thing. And here we see Jody Cooper's opponent for this heat, 18-year-old Georgia Smith, the Californian. Ian, this is Georgia's first year surfing as a professional, so to be in the finals of the OP Pro is a tremendous achievement. She's looking very, very strong. This looks like it's reforming into a nice wave. She's got much, much better wave selection. She's picking waves that have that terrific oh, reform. Yeah. She's working it's it. It's a great wave. And it, there you go. Oh. Now, that was an extremely that cool, committed re-entry. Yes. That's the sort of maneuver that we need to see Jody doing. Jody's going to have to go for broke, take the risks. After all, you're in the final. We also talked with Georgia earlier, and she talked about her strategy. Um, I'm just going to try to pull out all the stops and just surf my hardest and have fun and relax, not get too tense. So. To surf here, do you think you've got a little advantage? You're used to these kind of waves? Yeah, uh, I think um, I'm used to it because my home breaks a little like this, and uh, I think I have, have the advantage because it's small. Georgia lives down in San Clemente, which is about 30 miles south of us here, and the conditions are very similar, so it's no wonder she feels very comfortable out there. Well, she certainly does, and right now, at this moment in the final, Georgia has the advantage, and J.D. Cooper's up on a nice little wave here, weaving it through, getting speed. She needs to build speed, she needs to do a maneuver, because Georgia, remember, had that big re-entry on the last wave. And coming in is this, J.D. Cooper pulls up a great re-entry. Now, that was a floater maneuver, pulling distance down the line, but she wipes out. Now, that's going to be uh, the sort of maneuver she needs to knock off Georgia. We'll have a look at that on the replay. Comes up, a big floater, speed over the section, the fins drop out, and she hangs on there just for that split second. That's going to score very highly with the judges. And here's a shot of Georgia from Dan Merkel in the water. You know, the boards these surfers are using are state-of-the-art. Earlier in the week, Dave Stanfield got a glimpse of how these boards are made. The manufacturing of high-performance surfing equipment involves the talents of many skilled craftsmen. I'm at the Hobie factory here in Southern California. With me is the man who runs the factory, Danny Bronner. Danny, let's start at the beginning, the foam blank. Our foam blanks are poured into a mold, high-density foam blank with an eighth-inch or a quarter-inch wood stringer down the middle to keep it from breaking. The foam is uh, custom-shaped to the order, customer's order, whatever he wants, length, width, thickness. After the board is shaped, it then goes into the airbrushing room, which is another high-skilled area. Brushing off the board, spraying the board, and taping the board is all very highly creative. We custom make our own fins primarily to satisfy the customer on color, shape, mostly the shape, because every board is has a different fin on it, either one, two, or three. The fin acts as a rudder, same as it does on a boat. Without these fins, the board will not work. The next process will be the application of the fiberglass, which acts as a protective coating over the foam core. This will serve as a barrier against rocks, or if the board is lost, it'll help prevent it against sand scratches on the beach, etc. You can get the fiberglass in different ounces depending on the weight strength you want on the board. Here we see the board being sanded. 
This takes off the rough edges where the surfer or the person riding the board will not get cut, hurt in any way. And Danny, at the final step. The final step will be the polishing, which is a step taking the bead off the board and, again, makes it real shiny. And then it's taken up to our stores to uh, sell to the public. For something about uh, $350 or so, these custom boards are great. They're about six foot in height, but Ian, we've got a board for you. It's in the back. It's 12 feet long. It was made in 1954, all balsa wood. What are we going to sell it to them for? Uh, we'll take 2000 $2,000 and it's yours. Well, thanks for the offer, Dave, but I think I'll pass. I'll just stick to my normal surfboard. Thanks, mate. We're in the women's finals. Georgia Smith is surfing against Jody Cooper. And Georgia Smith is up on a really good-looking wave here on the outside. Cutting back, that was a great takeoff, incidentally. Cutting back, bringing it across the flat section. Hard to do maneuvers across here on the inside section. And remember, the big maneuver on the closeout and the shore break seems to be what's scoring points here in the women's final. And Georgia goes up for the big re-entry. And Georgia can't hang on. No, she just can't hang on to that re-entry. And you must stay on the surfboard through that maneuver to score really good points for it. That's a bit of an upsetting maneuver there for Georgia. Well, Georgia starts paddling back out again. Jody Cooper is going to take off on an outside wave. Jody's paddling for another wave. Jody really needs another really strong wave and a nice cut back off the top there. A little bit of a re-entry, bringing it through, fighting and staying steady in the white water. Now, Jody seems to be setting herself up for what looks like a good inside section, trying to keep the maneuvers going, flowing one, two, one, two. And she's not able to get that big re-entry, but she does get the distance and she does stay on the surfboard. Jody started off with a great re-entry on the outside and brings it all the way through to the inside. You know, I'm really pleased to see that the people are lined up across the pier and all across the beach are giving the same attention to the women's finals that they, did, that they do to the men's. That's something that hasn't been the case in past years. Well, in past years, the surfing standard hasn't been up there. Uh, obviously, I think most of the people are down here to see the, the men's stars, but these girls are putting on such a terrific performance, and uh, the, you know, the surfing is almost up to the standard of the men's surfing. It's really terrific. Without a doubt, fantastic performances from both girls. George Smith's up on a wave now, taking a right. Looks like it could reform quite well on the inside. Uh, but no, I don't know that she's going to make she it through. She doesn't have the same sort of wave selection. Yeah! Oh, all the way in. And outside, Jody Cooper. And this really looks like the wave that Jody needs. She's been running neck and neck with Georgia all the way. Great outside maneuver there. Good takeoff, nice re-entry. Bring it through the inside section. Now, Jody really needs to finish off this wave with a great maneuver. A lot of pizzazz and style to take away the final from Georgia Smith. And she chooses to go left into the shore break. A new maneuver off the top. That's a great maneuver. A terrific wave there for Jody Cooper. Falls off, but a great wave all the way through. Here in the instant replay, you can see Jody decides to go left. She's going backside, takes it up off the top. There's a big slash. It's got to be the maneuver of the heat right there. Nice wave. Jody's not going back out. But with no waves, Georgia must feel really helpless. I tell you, it's, it's sort of demoralizing sitting out there by yourself. All you need is one wave to come up. You know that it, you can take the contest away. Four, three, how will the Aussie do it? And there's the final horn. From her reaction, looks like Georgia might already have guessed the outcome. We'll be back with the results of the women's final in a moment. We're back with the announcement of the women's champion. Jody Cooper from Australia has defeated California's Georgia Smith. Gregory's with our winner now. Okay, Jody. Look at that good sportsmanship. Congratulations. How do you feel? I feel on top of the world. <laughs> I feel did, great. Did you think you'd won the last heat? Um, well, I thought I had more waves to the beach, and I was pretty sort of confident. A few friends told me that, you know, I'd won and stuff, but you never know until it's till the final. Well, congratulations to you. This is the first time that you've won this contest. Yes. Are you going to come back next year and, and uh, defend your title? I sure am. It's taken me two years to get here, and it's been worth it. Thank you, Gregory Harrison, and congratulations to you, Jody. We're about ready for Tom Kern and Mark Acalupo to begin the men's finals. And now would be a good opportunity to look back at the conclusion of the Miss O.P. Bikini Contest. The ten finalists are chosen. Starting it off is Karen Stevens. She's the first of ten finalists, 
chosen out of a bevy of California beauties. The crowd found her most distracting. Karen Foster, a petite blonde with a winning smile, also a crowd favorite. A tall, leggy brunette, Terry Collins captured the imagination of us all. Kim Reed, another pretty blonde, was a definite eye-catcher. And Kim Anderson, vivacious and forever eye-pleasing, she made a favorable impression on the fans. And lovely Wanda Acuna, with dark eyes and jet black hair, when Wanda walked on stage, beauty was in the eye of many beholders. And Carol Little, a perfect illustration of the California beach girl, wolf whistles and all. Many in the crowd were pretty enthusiastic about Vicki Williams' chances for success. While Diane Copeland, the picture of California health, gave all of us guys a reason to be thankful for bikini contests. And our 10th finalist, Ginger Miller, had a pretty smile for everyone. And as a result, most of this crowd fell in love with her. The moment had arrived. The judges, including our own Gregory Harrison, the lucky guy, announced Kim Anderson as third runner-up. Kim receiving her bouquet from Amy Brown, 1983 Miss O.P. Our second runner-up, second runner-up is Karen Foster. Karen Foster walked away with the second runner-up honors. Here's Karen receiving her bouquet with the accolades of the crowd. Our first runner-up, ladies and gentlemen, 1985 Miss O.P. Our first runner-up, definitely a crowd favorite, was lovely Vicki Williams. Vicky was obviously a popular choice, but who would be Miss O.P. had yet to be decided. This year, Kim Reed. Kim Reed. Beautiful Kim Reed. This year's Miss O.P. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Reed is what California girls are all about. We're back live now, ready for the men's finals. Tom Curran versus Mark Acalupo. There's a $6,000 check waiting for the winner, and Dave Stanfield has another bonus of the winner's purse. Dave? You might have seen Tommy Curran cruising around Santa Barbara in one of these. This is the Dodge pickup truck. He won that two years ago. Last year, he won the OP Pro, and he won a car. This year, he's trying for another pickup truck. This guy wants to open up a dealership. Can you believe that? Well, there's only one person in between Tom Curran and this truck, and he's got the nickname of Aki. Thank you, Dave Stanfield. There's Tom Curran out in the water now. This is his third consecutive OP Pro Final, and he's the defending champion. Can he pull it off, Ian? Well, he certainly can, but the man standing between him and this third championship is this kid from Sydney, Australia, Mark Ocalupo. Number three in the world last year to Tom Curran's before. This is an incredibly close matchup. Both surfers very equally matched. Final heat has started, and outside, Tommy Curran has picked up the first wave. Great-looking takeoff there, a maneuver off the top. You can see that Tom Curran is very hot in this final. He's slashing, he's got more speed, more power, more aggression than what he has shown all the way through in the heats earlier. And he's just going snapping off the top there. Snapping again. That was terrific power snaps there by Tom Curran. He's just going completely all out. He wants to win his third in a row, Buck. Oh, that's a great wave. What in the world can Akalupo do to match that? Well, here we have Aki now standing up, and he's taking off. And look at that, just bouncing off that section. It sends him down the line, flying down the line. That was sort of a rebound of a terrific power pocket on the outside. Aki's losing momentum, needs to pick it up, and this is his forte. Snapping off the inside section. There's that big slash cutback, and he's setting up for his big patent re-entry. And that's kind of the kind of surfing that we need to see from Oki. Well, this is a really a good opening wave for Oki and a terrific opening wave for Karen. You know, but 
Just a, it seems to me that surfing is a far cry from gymnastics. I tell you what, though, I think a gymnast would have the similar qualities that a uh, surfer has, and they have the feel for the Very balance and the agility. And you, have, you certainly have balance, you know, and a natural sense of balance that you wouldn't have to retrain yourself. Plus, we're used to wiping out. I'm good at that. <laughs> well, you're only landing on water out here, not, yeah, not on the ground. Water's a bit yeah. more forgiving than the mat sometimes is. <laughs> but uh, there's one one primary difference, say, Bart, here in the, in the surf is that you've got moving apparatus. Uh, you don't have to chase the, the horse around, and uh, the rings are there whenever you want them. You know, out here, you've got to, you've got to chase your waves and you've got to find them. So that's something that make, that sort of separates surfing a, a lot from other sports. The apparatus is different every time. Uh, every time. The situation. So there's a, there's a tremendous amount of spontaneity. Rather than, than working on a routine, you have to really sort of uh, instantly react and and it's reflex reactions to what the wave is showing you. Here's Tom Curran. He's outside. Looks like he's got a pretty good sized wave. Well, he sure does, Bart. And this is some of those instant reflex reactions we were talking about. Cuts it back off the face of the wave, responding to the wave. And you can see weaving across the inside section, going right, and then cutting back, trying to find which direction is going to be the right way for him to go to score the maximum points. And there he is. Pulls it back as a re-entry. Another re-entry off the, off the face of the wave. Tommy Curran is looking very, very strong at the start of this final, I tell you. Two great ways in a row and bring it right the way through, milking the wave all the way into the inside. Tom Curran, the defending OP Pro champion with a fantastic wave. He is hot. Here comes Mark Acalupo on an outside. He loses it. What happened? Well, he just, I think his pins hit the rope on the priority boy and he just wiped out. But that seems like a, a terrific illustration of a guy wiping out, losing out, falling off his apparatus, basically. Hey, I tell you, I know how to eat it in gymnastics. I don't know what this would feel like, but it doesn't look like any fun. Well, it's not that bad, Bart. There's plenty of surfing yet to come, so we'll break away and we'll be right back with more of the OP Pro. We're back at the OP Pro Surfing Championship. I'm Bart Connor, along with Gregory Harrison and Ian Karen. Of course, we have our Emmy Award-winning water photographer, Dan Merkel, out there, out there bashing the waves, trying to pick up something with his beta cam. Madman Merkel. Madman Merkel. He, he went off to Indonesia with you, didn't yes. he? Yes. Uh, in fact, that's where he won his Emmy. We did uh, we did an American Sportsman about four years ago. We went off to Grajigan, Java, yeah. in Indonesia, and uh, went to, went to a to a surf camp there and rode the the waves at Grajigan over these coral heads. And he was out there on his with with his uh, his, his still and his his motion picture cameras in the water on his mat with sea snakes and sharks. <laughs> well, yeah. Sea snakes and sharks know that Dan Merkel will bite back. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's they didn't thing. bother him one bit. Well, Dan's certainly getting some interesting shots from the water angle today. But it looks like Tom Curran's found an outside set, Ian. He sure has, Bart. Up and riding, Tommy Curran off the top on a good left hand, a great slash off the top there, bringing it back right under the white water. Tom trying to fight that white water. Now he's going to start to pick up some pace through the inside section, through the middle section of the wave, actually. Good snap off the top. And now he chooses to go left towards the pier. Great re-entry there. Terrific action from Tommy Curran. And as we've seen all day, he brings a wave right the way through to the inside section in the white water and gets the maximum points for that ride. But Ian, Mark Acalupo is firing right back. These guys are going wave for wave. They certainly are, but this is great speed for Acalupo. Keeping the wave moving, the board going up off the lip there. Great re-entry there. That was really a good maneuver. The speed is, is just terrific of Acalupo's maneuver. He's running out of wave here. Well, he sure is, Bart, but he's able to do another maneuver which just scores more points. Oh, I can't believe this. In checking with the judges, we're discovering that Marco Calupo has a very, very slim lead over Tom Kern at this point in the heat. One good wave from either one of these surfers could mean the difference between winning and losing. This is a very, very tight contest. So Acalupo is ahead of Tom Curran in points so far. Well, he sure is, Bart. And this is the kind of surfing that's taking Acalupo into the lead. A great aggressive re-entry there, carving off that white water there. Terrific surfing. Well, at the same time, Tom Curran's performance has been equally as radical, Ian. This is outstanding surfing in the men's finals. And here's Tom Curran up on another wave. He's really going for it. Tom Curran knows he needs to do it. Look at that maneuver there. 
Did you see that move from that Tom was Curran? Exactly that kind of circumstance. That was the kind of move he needed. Well, that was the same thing there. Tom came off the top, caught an edge, and immediately he just said, "Hang on, I am not falling. I'm going to power into this maneuver rather than take the pressure off." And he pulled off that outside maneuver and brings it all the way in. That's championship surfing, Ian. Yeah, but a lesser competitor would not have had that willpower to, to pull out of that, that edge, edge catch out the back. So Tom Curran completing another well-executed and undoubtedly high-scoring wave in what has turned into a fantastic men's final. And Mark Acalupo coming right back. Acalupo on the outside. Look at that. Yeah, you see that? surfboard with his feet in the air and he stood back up. Okalupo is not going to quit for this one. Such a fantastic competitor. What a tremendous final. Both surfers are just... They've got the, got the crowd on their feet. Both really are just going a million percent. Really impressive, yes. Yeah. That's a show of balance the likes of which I very seldom seen in my life. Unbelievable. Let's see that incredible ride again. Well, Bart, this is it. You know, right off the top, the wave crashes all over him. Okalupo is totally off the surfboard, and then he just forces himself back on the board. This is sheer determination. He wants to win. Now, Curran's up. He's going to have to do something awfully special to try and keep up with Okalupo. Well, Curran really needs this wave. Off the top. This is the last wave of the heat. Curran's off the top again. Two really terrific maneuvers in a row. He needs to do everything possible on this last wave to see whether he can match Okalupo's last wave. Curran trying to pump up a little bit of speed coming into the inside section needs to do something very special in here setting it up nice little throwout section and a re-entry a terrific maneuver there for Tommy Curran but is it going to be enough a smaller wave Ocalupo's last wave is a big one that's a smaller wave I don't know and the heat has ended Mark Ocalupo already on the beach Tom Curran headed into await the judges final decision as to this year's winner of the OP Pro Championship and while we're awaiting that decision, let's look at yet another activity that's been featured at the beach this week. Ramp skateboarding. Man, let me tell you, these guys are hot. The things these skaters can do with four wheels and a piece of plywood defy gravity and the imagination. And the roller skater can even find a place on the ramp if he's crazy enough. Our cameraman's getting a wheel's eye view for you. With these guys, a recreational pastime for young people has been elevated to an art form. Ramp skateboarding is definitely a kick to watch. Here's the live announcement of the winner. Squeaking by on a four-to-one split decision, Mark Ocalupo. There you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Ocalupo came through in the end. Let's talk to you, Mark. How do you feel? I feel fantastic. Flabbergasted, fantastic, and everything. And what about this crazy crowd? They obviously wanted the American to win, but you were hot the last couple of rounds. Yeah. Well, uh, I came back. I lost the first set and um, gained momentum. So uh, that that was the thing that got me there. It seemed like you were really hot. You found the right waves and you really milked them for all the points you could get. Did it feel like you were right on today? Yeah, I felt like I was right on. Yep, definitely. What does this mean to you in your career and what's next? Well, I think this is the biggest win of my career so far, for sure. Yep. Well, congratulations. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll be back for a recap of the day's events right after this. Back in Huntington Beach, California, for some final comments on the OP Pro Surfing Championship. Gregory Harrison, you had to see some of the finest surfing you've ever seen. I was uh, truly impressed today. I mean, just really incredible effort, uh, amazing maneuvers being pulled off. Some of the the best surfing that I've ever seen in my life, and I've I've been to many a contest. You know, without a doubt, an event like this does a lot to raise the credibility of surfing. Ian Karens, of course, we've tried not to interject too much nationalism into this event, but the Aussies won.
Well, they sure did. They love a competition, and the Australians went, win both the men and, men's and women's division. I'm really excited, uh, particularly in the women's. Uh, you know, J.D. Cooper really needed a break. Ocalupo is coming up. I think uh, Australian surfing is alive and well for a few more years to come. So for Ian Cairns, Gregory Harrison, and David Stanfield, I'm Bart Connor. Join us next year for the OP Pro Surfing Championship. Thank <laughs> you.